I will explain the application of 3D case to compute uh, invariant of knots called uh, volumes or complex volumes of knots. Uh, this is just uh, to recall the notation in cluster algebra. So we have a uh, triple um, of these informations. First one is uh, n by n uh, skew symmetry integral matrix called exchange matrix. And we have X and Y variables. And we have mutations uh, like this. And skew symmetric uh, matrix uh, is identified with a creeper without loop and two circles. So, and uh, please recall these things. And I go to 2D to hyperbolic geometry. So uh, first slide is the same as yesterday's one. So for oriented surface of genus G with M points, um, we have uh, triangulation of a sigma. So uh, each triangle uh, has three vertices and all of them are uh, one of the points in this point set. Then uh, this is uh, the same example. So if we have such a triangulation of uh, this triangulation of four puncture sphere, then uh, we can draw uh, its dual equal. Then um, the point to apply a cluster algebra is to draw a dual triangle like this. And by flipping the triangulation from this to this, for example, by changing the diagonals, uh, it is compatible with the mutation of dual cleaver like this. So if you mutate at vertex three of this cleaver, then you obtain this. So this is a nice uh, correspondence. When the surface admits hyperbolic structure, as I explained from now, and so T is an ideal triangulation, then uh, this is the dictionary uh, between the terminology of cluster algebra and 2 g hyperbolic geometry, as I explained yesterday. So cleaver is triangulation, and mutation of a cleaver is a flip of a triangulation, change of triangulation, and x variables are related to lambda coordinate on the surface, and y variables are related to shear coordinate, another coordinate, and mutation of, for example, x variables are nothing but a Ptolemy relation for lambda coordinate. So from now, I explain how lambda coordinate and Ptolemy relation appears. Then uh, for this purpose, I should explain uh, uh, 2G hyperbolic geometry uh, in detail. So uh, let H2 be a upper, uh, upper half uh, plane. Uh, this is one of the uh, Good model of hyperbolic two D two dimensional structure. So, and this is a two dimensional real space, and we assume uh, y coordinate is only positive, and we can write this space by using uh, by using a one dimensional complex space. So, whose imaginary part is positive, the metric of this space is given by this this formula. So it means that if you go to uh, x axis then uh, the length uh, is diverging. So we cannot approach to the x-axis actually in this space. And so we compactify this space by adding x-axis or real uh, line and infinity point like this. Then an ideal triangle in this space is a triangle whose vertices are on the boundary. So are or infinity points and each edge should be a semicircle on um, orthogonal to x axis like this. So this is a picture of ideal triangle in this space. So we consider upper half uh, plane, and this is the ideal triangle. If you move uh, this vertex to infinity, we get uh, this one. This is also an ideal triangle. So we consider this kind of thing from now, and um, actually, uh, there is a PSL2R option uh, on this space, uh, which uh, moves Z in, in this uh, expression. 
we move Z to AZ uh, as a Mobius transformation. So because uh, this, is, uh, this A belongs to PSL2R, so determinant of this matrix is one, so it then uh, it follows that, so this metric is invariant under this action. And second, so all ideal triangles are congruent uh, because all edges uh, of this triangle has infinity uh, lengths. So, so it means that uh, we cannot, um, how to say, distinguish triangles. And uh, moreover, uh, also the lengths of edges are infinity, the area is finite, and it is easy to know that area is pi. Then, so distinct, to distinguish such triangles, Panda introduce a good coordinate called lambda length. So this is um, so the geodesics are straight line in the upper half space, upper half plane, sorry, uh, connecting uh, two points P1. We assign uh, two circles to each uh, P1, P2, P2, tangent to uh, this point. Then, uh, we can compute uh, the lengths um, between these two crossing. It, it should be finite, of course. And we call this length L, depending on the uh, radius of uh, two circles. Then if the crossing, uh, so two uh, horocycles are cross like this, uh, we write L for the minus of the length of this uh, this so a part of a circle. So further, we define a lambda length, uh, lambda, uh, as exponential of the half of this L. So if uh, L is positive, then it is bigger than one. And if L is negative, then it, it is smaller than one. So in any case, uh, this is a positive. And this is called uh, lambda length of P1, P2, uh, given by, uh, determined by these two uh, hollow cycles. So the nice property of this lambda length is as follows. So let's consider this uh, quadrilateral, ideal quadrilateral. Uh, and it has, uh, so four hollow cycles at each point. And we, it has a two diagram like this. Then for such a uh, thing, uh, the following property uh, is satisfied, uh, what is called uh, hyperbolic Ptolemy's uh, Ptolemy theorem. So this means uh, the six, uh, so the relation for six uh, lambda lengths appearing in this picture. So in the left hand side, we have a lambda lengths for two diagonals. Uh, P1, P3, and uh, P2, P4. Then in the right-hand side, uh, we have uh, two terms. The first terms um, corresponding to uh, lambda lengths of P1, P2, and P3, P4. And uh, another one is related to P2, P3, and P1, P2. So, uh, Sorry. Yeah. how can you choose H, HR? Ah, yes, we, we choose uh, so radius of four whole cycles first from H1 to H4. Just a choice. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it depends on the choice of the radius of whole cycles first. Then uh, it is satisfied. Then uh, actually, if you uh, consider the dual quiver to this uh, triangulation, for example, if we choose this diagonal three first, then we can fix the triangulation and we consider uh, X variables or something. And if you uh, mutate this edge three into this one, so to get the flip, then uh, this, how to say, mutation relation for X variables are obtained. So we just, uh, I just write, uh, so, remove the denominator in the right hand side in mutation. So left hand side is x3 times mu x3, uh, written as x3 prime, is equal to this one. And so these two are really related by identifying x variables with lambda lengths on the same edge. Then uh, 
I'd like to remark that the original, so classical uh, Ptolemy's theorem is for uh, four points on the circle in usual Euclidean uh, space R2, and where lambda length is replaced with a uh, uh, usual length between two points. This is the original one. And this uh, theorem introduced by Penna was really its hyperbolic version. And second, so now we know that a triangulation is quiver and lambda coordinate is x bar. I, I don't explain uh, about the shear coordinate in detail, but roughly, as I said yesterday, uh, this is a cross ratio of four points. So in this way, we can relate uh, the x and y variables uh, to the terminology in hyperbolic geometry. And moreover, so I introduced a decorated Tychian space yesterday, and from now I briefly explain it is really uh, related to the polar cycles I introduced now. So. Tachimera space, uh, I'd like to uh, omit the detail, but so for a uh, punctured Riemann surface of genus G, uh, we assume uh, this is without, uh, without boundary. Uh, it has a triangulation with this number of edge. So 6G minus six plus three S edges it has. And also its tachymeric space is defined as uh, some faithful represent, a set of faithful representation of a uh, fundamental group by PSL to R with some conditions, module something. And so the collected uh, tachymeric space it is now uh, obtained as a tachymeric space plus the largest of both sides. So this is what we are uh, fixed to in drawing four uh, cycles, and it is included in the, co uh, the information of the collective time space now. And actually, uh, x variables or lambda lengths is a good coordinate for this space. So this is what Penna proved. Then, uh, moreover, we have uh, y variables besides x variables as a shear coordinate. And as I explained yesterday, by using this coordinate, uh, we can uh, explicitly write down um, this. So this is uh, the additional information to yesterday's my talk about two-dimensional hyperbolic geometry. Then um, I'd like to mention a little bit on the uh, higher Dichimer case for a general G. So yesterday, I only explained about the SL n plus one case, and um, but today I'd like to uh, mention a general case a little bit. So originally it was so SL two representation of pi one, but uh, Fock and Goncher uh, considered to generalize uh, this representation to general uh, V group G, and for such purpose, what we did, uh, what they did is the same. So. Uh, we fix a reduced expression of the longest element in the uh, variable WG in this case. And for this expression, uh, there is a way to get some quiver combinatorially. And by adding uh, n vertices, uh, we can prepare a quiver uh, located in each triangle like, like this. So this is a, a simplest case, A1 case, and this is the A2 case. And this is uh, new for today. So this is an example of uh, the algebra of non-simply laced thinking dialogue. So this is the case of C2. And in this case, we have, uh, so the longest element whose reduced expression is given by 2121 or 1212. And for such expression, we have this group quiver. Uh, so which includes two kinds of vertices, one is weight one, this is the same as the A case, but we have a uh, weight two vertices two. And by using these two kinds of uh, vertices, we can uh, define some generalization of quiver. And uh, we add two uh, additional vertices and we can obtain this one. 
So the big difference um, between A case and uh, non other case is a symmetry of this cleaver. So A case, it, oh, sorry. This is very symmetric. So this, it has a S3 symmetry like this. So, but in this case, we uh, don't have such a symmetry anymore. So because of that, uh, in general, we uh, fix a direction triangle by setting this star at some vertex. And so with this uh, star, we know that, uh, say, the direction of the cleaver. So in this case, this uh, direction is associated to this blue cleaver. So if you want to change the direction, uh, it is known that, uh, so, but by applying uh, mutations to this cleaver, we can obtain the difference, uh, different uh, lo uh, location of cleaver in triangle. So we can change this direction uh, by applying mutation. This is a difference uh, from A case and other case. So just to make sure I understand, you're saying that um, you take your surface, you take a triangulation, yes. and in each triangle, they different type. To you put in that little, little plot. Yes, but you, if you want to compute some uh, quantity by passing, uh, how to say, for example, if you construct explicitly the element in the uh, higher Tahimura space, like representation of pi one, uh, so this direction is the light direction for pass to go. So along this blue cleaver. So, but if you want to compute this direction, for example, and then uh, what you have to do is first you rotate uh, this cleaver to make uh, this direction of pass is the same as the direction of this blue cleaver. After such a uh, tuning, you can compute uh, the representation. So in A case, we don't have to do that because uh, all directions are the, uh, have the same symmetry. But in other case, uh, the situation becomes a little different and different. But it is just a technical uh, information. So it is not a essential part. So uh, in this way, so in general, as I explained yesterday, so if a surface with boundary, uh, we can do the same thing. And we have several geometrical space. And so the y variables are, uh, it, y variable is the coordinate for a P space, uh, which includes uh, additional information to higher Tahimura space, so L space. And uh, A space is the generalization of decorated Tahimura space uh, introduced by Penna and whose coordinate is given by X, Y. So and this is, was a story for two dimensional uh, case. Uh, next, I want to go a three-dimensional case. So uh, in three-dimensional case, uh, again, I have to explain the three hyperbolic geometry knowledge. So in this case, now uh, we consider uh, upper half space, H3. Uh, this is a half of three-dimensional real space whose third coordinate is positive. So we can regard this space as a complex space times a positive real. Then uh, its matrix is again given by this formula. So it means that if you go to uh, the subspace T3 is zero, then uh, everything diverges. And so this is a compactification of X3 by adding complex space and infinity points. And on this space, a PSL to RC, a PSL to C uh, acts as a Mabius transformation only on the boundary, the only on this part. And then ideal tetrahedron in this space is given as follows. So we assume that uh, all vertices, so four vertices are on the boundary and edge of tetrahedron is a semicircle um, orthogonal to T, Y, T, T plane. So like, like this, like this semicircle. And the face is a part of hemisphere uh, tangent, uh, so orthogonal to this T1, T2 space. So 
it means that the center of semicircle or a hemisphere are uh, on the boundary. So this is, is uh, either tetrahedron uh, where one vertex is at infinity. So it has so four vertices, including this infinity point, and uh, it has so four faces, one, two, three, and four in the other side. So if this infinity point is, becomes finite, we have something uh, like so this, this kind of thing as a uh, idea of the head, like uh, let's say tire Santa Cruz hat. So, but uh, it is not easy to draw uh, such a uh, tetrahedron. So in this talk, I take I take usual uh, picture of tetrahedron. So this numbering of uh, vertices are very important. So we all, and uh, if you look down this tetrahedron from V O, uh, we have V one, two, three in uh, clockwise. Then uh, such a ideal tetrahedron is now, uh, how to say, can be distinguished. This is a different uh, point uh, from the 2D case. So by computing uh, the cross ratio of four vertices, uh, this is a complex number. Now uh, it is a kind of invariant of this uh, tetrahedron called modulus. Then the property of this Z is as follows. So Z, uh, this modulus is invariant under the PSL2C action on vertices. So we can always move uh, four vertices V0, 1, 2, 3 to these four points, infinity. And uh, so it, this vertex goes to infinity and it goes to zero, it goes to one and it goes to modulus. Uh, by this transformation. And actually argument of Z, this point is nothing but the dihedral angle along this uh, edge V O. Moreover, uh, this Z uh, gives the volume of this tetrahedron by using this block Rubner function. So it is a kind of a, how to say, it is a brother or cousin of other algebraic function given by this formula. And so, so it is a hyperbolic volume. And uh, third, so we want to compute a hyperbolic volume of the uh, cusp three hyperbolic manifold M. So cusp means, so it has some infinity points approaching to the boundary. And so if we know uh, ideal tetrahedral decomposition of such three manifold uh, like this, then uh, we can compute it modulus, modulus for each uh, tetrahedron um, by computing uh, some gluing condition for tetrahedron. And we can compute uh, the volume of this uh, object by using this Brockman function. Then uh, actually, uh, it is not easy to find uh, tetrahedral decomposition for a given uh, three manifold. But uh, this is another story. So if we, we can, then we can compute the volume. Then uh, I'd like to remark about the modulus more. So this is uh, ideal tetrahedron. And along uh, V0, V1, we have a complex number modulus Z here. And because of the symmetry of this modulus, uh, this edge V3, V2 also has Z. Then uh, further, so each edge has Z prime or Z two prime uh, given by this formula. And you can uh, relate uh, Z and Z prime and Z two prime by the symmetry of this uh, close ratio. And it is uh, as expected, uh, the quantity of the hyperbolic volume uh, given by Brockwigner function uh, doesn't change uh, if you can uh, use choose Z or Z prime or Z two prime, not less. Then uh, this is a very basic in three dimensional hyperbolic things. And from now to the late uh, the cluster things, uh, I have to go uh, 
more further. So it may be a very complicated part, but let's try. So to relate uh, the cluster things, uh, I introduced the refinement of the modulus called flattening. So by using this flattening, uh, we can compute not only hyperbolic volume, but we can compute chan Simons inquiry to get complex volume. So for uh, oriented either tetrahedron, uh, oriented means we have two types of tetrahedron. So two types of tetrahedra. First one is this one. And second one is obtained by interchanging the numbering of vertices V2 and V3. So this is inside out tetrahedron in some sense. Then uh, we prepare such two tetrahedra and we assign a sign plus or plus one or minus one to each one. And uh, we uh, can define, uh, how to say, uh, the generalization of modulus called flattening. So here Z is the modulus and P, Q are some integers. Then if we know such a flattening, uh, we can compute the complex volume of three hyperbolic manifold. So actually complex volume uh, is, uh, it is a complex number uh, consisting of a hyperbolic volume and chan Simons invariant. So both of them are real number. So by using this imaginary unit I, uh, it gives a complex number. So its imaginary part is hyperbolic volume and uh, minus real part is chan Simons invariant. So it can be computed by using this formula where we have a sign of tetrahedra here and L is uh, extended Broglie function uh, given by this complex formula. So, uh, so yeah, there is uh, some background to uh, produce this function, but anyhow, its real uh, part is, uh, sorry, its imaginary part is a uh, Broglie function. You say some word about the Chan Simons invariant? You don't, you don't define chance. I, I, I don't define chance. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. invariant of the manifold. Yes. That is. The it's invariant of your manifold. Uh, for, for manifold only, okay. not for tetrahedron. Okay. Yeah. Roughly speaking, it, it describes how oriented tetrahedra rotated in the manifold by Louis. Really. Very lovely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's explained in the paper of the man. Sorry? It has been explained in the paper of the man. Where I can find the reference for that? At Chan Simons? On Chan Simons, oh, yeah. Uh, it's a long uh, before of Neumann there. It was just different. the connection between Chan Simons and what you explained? Uh, flattening. Yeah. yeah. It was introduced by Neumann. Okay. Yeah. So actually, it is not the easy problem to compute flattening by following the original definition. So, uh, but there is a very nice combinatorial way to uh, get flattening introduced by uh, Garou Fardis, Thurston, and Zickert. So it is, comes from a Ptolemy assignment as follows. So for uh, uh, oriented uh, tetrahedron, uh, we assign complex number C to each edge. And uh, for each face, we assign a plus one or a minus one. This is called Ptolemy assignment. And uh, they are required to satisfy this relation. So because sigma is just a plus one or minus one, so this relation is like Ptolemy's relation. So, uh, so they require uh, to assign such a uh, assignment to each tetrahedron in three hyperbolic manifold M. Then uh, the result is that if uh, you assign a uh, Ptolemy's uh, assignment for tetrahedra, then for each uh, tetrahedron, the flattening can be computed in the following way. So the modulus Z is given by this formula. And additional information P and Q, these integers are given by this two, two formula. 
from here and here. So actually, uh, because we take uh, use log here, uh, P and Q are not determined uniquely, but it doesn't matter actually. Then in this way, uh, we can uh, compute a flattening by a Ptolemy assignment. Actually, so these uh, notions are related to cluster things from now. So in two-dimensional case, uh, we already know the relation um, between a flip and mutation. And we use uh, this relation also in 3D case, but we assume that uh, the, this triangulation is in H3 as the ideal triangulation. So it means that so each triangle, triangle is an uh, ideal triangle in H3. So it is a part of a semisphere. So it, this uh, triangulation uh, is some so maybe uh, triangle in uh, H3. And so by changing this diagonal, not only uh, the, how to say the edge, but also the shape of uh, triangles are changed at the same time. So we think to change the shape of uh, this wave, so sur waving surface by attaching an uh, ideal tetrahedron. So it means that, so this is an ideal tetrahedron. So it has four faces, four triangular faces, two in, in this side and two in another side. Then uh, we grew uh, these two uh, triangular triangles uh, with these two uh, triangles in the other side. And the new uh, surface uh, is given by the new, these two uh, faces of tetrahedron in this side. So let's consider this situation. Then we want to know uh, what happened to the shape of this uh, tri tri triangulated uh, surface. So uh, actually the shape of uh, this uh, surface is parameterized by uh, these complex numbers Z. So whose uh, each of uh, angle uh, of Z is related to the uh, dihedral angle along each edge like that. So we want to know what is, uh, what, how, sorry, how, oh, sorry, how Z tilde uh, is are described by old Z from now by this attachment. And, uh, sorry, moreover, sorry, oh, it's difficult. So moreover, so please recall Ptolemy's relation, uh, Ptolemy's assignment. So we attach complex number C to each uh, edge of tetrahedron like this. Then uh, we consider the change uh, from old Z to new Z with tilde. So actually uh, the formula is given as this uh, because uh, so Z is related to the dihedral angle. So new Z1 tilde is given by a product of Z1 and Z prime along this edge and Z2 tilde is given as t2 times g2 prime and so on. And z3 tilde has a little bit different uh, structure. So this is nothing but the modulus z of this tetrahedron. So we have this formula and so on. So, and uh, we have grouped tetrahedron to uh, on this surface. So this tetrahedron should fit on this surface perfectly. So this condition is given by this formula. So Z3 times Z is one. It means the uh, angle around uh, this edge should be two pi. So uh, by adding this condition, uh, this formula is re rewritten as this one by using this formula. Uh, now, you may notice that uh, this is very similar to the mutation of y variable. So actually the mutation of Y variables in this case uh, is written as this. So you can identify these two um, by transforming ZI 
to minus y i. And so in this formula, so the modulus uh, of this tetrahedron is determined as minus one over y three. Yes, so this relation is very nice. And uh, moreover, about x variables, uh, we have this relation for as the mutation for this cleaver. And actually, uh, by comparing a numbering of uh, these, ver these vertices of the cleaver and uh, this Ptolemy assignment of complex number C, uh, we should we know that uh, Ptolemy relation C satis should satisfy is this one. So in this computation, we don't uh, get the old sigma attached in face of faces of uh, tetrahedron, uh, but it actually it doesn't matter to compute so uh, the volume of uh, three manifold. So this mutation is related to this one, uh, but there are some signs. But uh, roughly speaking, so complex number C in oh, sorry the assignment sorry is uh, related to x variables and modulus is related to uh, y variables on y variables on the edge, uh, how to say, on the edge, on the flipped edge. So in this way, we can relate our cluster things to uh, 3D hyperbolic geometry. So this is an updated dictionary. So we had two, 2D case, and now we have 3D case here. So cleaver is related to some in ideal translation of the surface. This is a, some, a kind of wavy surface. And cleaver mutation is related to the attachment of either tetrahedron. And x variables are related to a part of Ptolemy assignment. And y variables are corresponding to modulus. And mutation should be related to the gluing condition for that tetrahedron. Uh, now, our uh, question is that if the tetrahedral decomposition of a three manifold M is written as a flip of some uh, ideal surface, like I did uh, by attaching either tetrahedron, then in such a case, uh, we may compute the hyperic or complex volume of three manifold using cluster mutation. So as I explained, the gluing condition for tetrahedra is automatically uh, obtained from cluster mutation. So we want to uh, use uh, this one to compute some, something interesting. Then actually this idea was originally from uh, Nagao Terashima Nagasaki and for uh, hyperbolic volume. And uh, we uh, generalized on their strategy to include complex volume by using x variables too. So um, the next, as uh, a last topic, I'd like to explain how to apply these things to compute uh, invariant, not called complex volume. So, and, <laughs> okay. okay, so I'd like to introduce uh, some basics in not theory. Uh, Okay, so so I I'd like to introduce blade group. So uh, I think um, many of you already know this one. So this is a group generated by uh, these uh, generators satisfying this relation. The first one is called uh, bread relation or young. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> You are here. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. This is a division. <laughs> and for a not K, uh, we can choose the braid representation of this knot uh, by using, uh, in this case, N strands, for example. And after uh, closing uh, these things by using this representation, uh, by closing the end of each strand, we get a knot, or sometimes it becomes links. So, and uh, this is called the braid representation, and it is not unique, but it doesn't matter. So, by uh, using such a braid representation, many invariants of knot can be 
uh, computed. So in this case, uh, I show a braided representation of the figure eight knot, but this, this is the simplest uh, hyperbolic knot. So actually the invariant knot means, invariant of knot means that if the invariant is different, then the knot, knots are different. So we cannot go the opposite way, unfortunately, but yeah, this is a, a definition of invariant. So the, how to say, historically, the Alexander polynomial is very uh, famous. And besides this, we have many, many invariants. So today I will mention John's polynomial and volumes and such. Is it hyperbolic? You say a uh, hyperbolic uh, knot. A hyperbolic knot? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, the definition of hyperbolic knot is that the uh, knot complements in S3 uh, has a hyperbolic structure and its volume is not zero. This is the definition. Yeah. It is known that there are infinitely many hyperbolic knots. And so how to compute the volume of knots? So this case, uh, let's consider uh, to glue these two uh, tetrahedra uh, by cutting edges. After cutting edges in the following way. So we grew this face with this face one and this face two with this face two and so on. Actually, uh, it is impossible to do this growing in three dimensional real space. But if we, we go uh, higher, it's possible. And we see that uh, it gives uh, not complements. So complements of figure eight not in S3. So actually the boundary uh, is a knot. So if you grew uh, this boundary, uh, each of uh, them are, has a triangle, uh, by growing these uh, boundaries, you see that uh, the boundary has really a torus shape. And so it's tangling. This, uh, how to say, this is tangling as a eight figure, a figure eight knot, sorry. So this is the meaning of the uh, complement of knot. And uh, actually in this case, uh, uh, this has a hyperbolic structure and we can compute the uh, volume of this knot. And so if we compute the, uh, solve the gluing condition of these two tetrahedron, tetrahedra, uh, we see that these two are uh, normal tetrahedra. And uh, its volume is given by this irrational knot. Um, it was uh, computed uh, for the first time by William Thurston, and this was a great discovery of him. So actually, it's highly non-trivial uh, problem to find uh, the knot complement by growing these two tetrahedra. So it's amazing, uh, even now for me. Then, uh, so, sorry, I have a question. Yeah. This is well, what is the dimension of this volume? It's a cube of some meters. I have always some pleasure when you say volume. Uh, it's the volume, volume of the room, I need to put some units. Ah, uh, yeah. What uh, is the unit here? Yeah, unit is so. Uh, it's it is determined uniquely. So as I said, so in the case of a uh, two dimensional hyperbolic case, all ideal tetrahedra has an uh, area pi. Yeah. In, in the same way, okay. yeah. Uh, so it, the unit is fixed automatically. And so in the case of uh, the computation using flattening, a uh, flattening is computed in this way, for example. So in this case, one tetrahedra is the normal one, and another one is inside at one. And by uh, using this quantity, we know that the hyper volume is given by this quantity. So in this case, uh, because of the high symmetry of figure eight knot, Chan Simon's invariant is zero. Then uh, from now, I go to cluster thing. So let's consider the cluster realization of the braid group in the following way. So first we prepare one R matrix, the generator of the braid group in the following way. So we consider this cleaver, 
and uh, mutate at vertex four and two and six. So uh, actually two and six are uh, not connected by any arrow, so they are commutative. And we get this one, and further we apply mutation four again. And for some reason, we uh, change uh, the numbering of some vertices, and then we get this queen. So you see that these two are the same as a cleaver because, for example, uh, we have uh, here, so four, three, one, two. This is topologically the same as this one, four, two, one, three. So in this meaning, so these two quivers are the same. So we can say that uh, the following. So let's call Ri to the sequence of these uh, mutations and parametration. Uh, then uh, we call this cleaver D2, and D2 is not uh, changed by this mutation, but X and Y variables may change. So this is a good sign. And we consider this sequence of mutation by using punctured surface. So actually, this cleaver, this cleaver is the dual to the triangulation of this uh, two puncture surf, uh, two puncture disk with two uh, points on the boundary with this triangulation. Then uh, we uh, mutated at vertex four first. So let's flip uh, this triangulation at edge four and we get this one. And the correspondence with the cleaver is given this. So by using this kind of dual cleaver, so this cleaver is changed to this one as before. And we further continue uh, this mutations. So for simplicity, I omit the cleaver size from now. And we change the triangulation at two and six like this. And we uh, change uh, triangulation at four. And further, we change uh, the numbering of some edges. Then we get this one. So actually, uh, the triangulation uh, are different from the viewpoint of geometry. And you see that uh, inner two punctures are rotated halfway, so geometrically. So this is the reason uh, this operation is called half dentures. So uh, this uh, change of triangulation are already known by these people, but we just translate this in terms of cluster mutation. Then uh, by using this one, uh, we can define a uh, blade group realization actuary. Sorry, can you say what that group is? Uh, so two inner punctures are rotated. So, uh, okay, so let's, uh, let's think in the following way. So this is a triangulated surface all, all and the all the labels, edges. The labels of the diagonals attached to the left. Yeah, Interest yes, the yeah, yeah. yeah, like that. So it may be better to consider uh, this triangulation is on some lava and you can move, <laughs> yeah, like that. So uh, before that, uh, let's think what happens geometrically more. So this is a, a mutation of X and Y variables. This is a complicated rational transformation. On the other hand, so please recall that uh, one mutation is an attachment of an a tetrahedron. So in this case, we apply four mutations. So we have so four uh, tetrahedron, and by gluing them, we get sorry, we grew uh, these four tetrahedron in this case. We get our uh, octahedron in this case. Then. Uh, actually, please imagine that, so uh, at these two inner punctures, uh, we have a strands of knot from other side to this side, like this. So orthogonal to the screen, we have two strands. And by rotating this point, uh, these two strands cross in three dimensional uh, view. So, these two strands from back to the front of the screen, and it is so how to say close by uh, by this half dense twist. 
So this is realized by attaching four uh, tetrahedron here. So consisting of how to say this octahedron is uh, made by four uh, tetrahedron like this. And so octahedron has eight faces and four of them are, are related to the triangulation and four of them is related to the new triangulation after mutations. So, uh, so it is again a very complicated thing, but uh, please imagine uh, by applying this sequence of mutation, we get a octahedron as the composition of four uh, tetrahedron. Then uh, actually uh, this octahedron has a curious uh, shape uh, because we have to identify these two blue edges and uh, these two uh, red edges uh, to get <laughs> something. So it is a complicated object, but anyhow, uh, this is what happened in geometry. And so by using such a uh, thing, uh, we can define the blue a grade group uh, realization. So let's consider n puncture disk with two points on the boundary. Actually, it can be obtained by gluing uh, the previous disk and the dual quiver is given by this one. So this is the first two is what I introduced. Then, so for neighboring two uh, square, uh, we can define a sequence of mutation in the same way. And we can show that uh, each, so RI applying to, uh, acting on the ice and I press first uh, square uh, doesn't change uh, the full quiver. And moreover, this RI generates the braid group action on C or uh, induced action on, on the uh, rational functional field of uh, X or Y variables. Uh, so it is a representation of the great, great group. Uh, it is very nice. So we can use uh, this structure to uh, compute a volume of knot in the following way. So our conjecture uh, in 2015 uh, was as follows. So for a knot K, uh, we can choose the braid representation, braid group representation as I explained. And by following this representation, we consider a sequence of X variables uh, corresponding to this one. So we start with X1 and, and by applying the first uh, R, we get X2 and so on. And so, as I said, to get not all links, uh, we uh, grew the end of each strand, and it corresponds to this periodic count variables. So um, our conjecture is that uh, there exists a solution of this periodic uh, equation, uh, which gives the complex volume of the not complex. This is our conjecture. So actually, uh, to solve this equation is uh, very difficult. Uh, the main reason is that the number of equations is less than the number of variables. So <laughs> it is so mess. So, but our claim is that there is some solution for this uh, equation, which gives a complex volume. Then uh, fortunately, uh, this conjecture is almost solved by Cho Yon Zickert recently uh, for a hyperbolic knot. So they uh, proved that uh, the solution of this equation uh, result zero. It means it's a good solution. It exists if and only if the length of braid representation is odd. So I'm very happy to have this one. And so I'd like to remark a few things. So actually it is difficult to solve this equation as I explained. Um, and uh, for their theorem, uh, for any knot, uh, there exists a braid representation of odd m. It is easy to attach uh, some, so what to say, uh, something to a uh, braid representation. So actually we conjecture that uh, 
conjecture this thing are uh, also for non hyperbolic knots uh, for uh, the because of the numerical result. So, uh, but hyperbolic case are it solve, and we hope to uh, how to say so uh, this conjecture also for non hyperbolic case, but I have no idea for now. Then. Uh, in closing, so I'd like to show uh, several results of numerical calculation. So actually it includes a dangerous solution. So figure eight not case, by solving uh, this equation, uh, we have as uh, this solution with zero unfortunately uh, to give a correct answer. And also for trefoil not case, uh, this is a typical example of non hyperbolic knot whose hyper hyperbolic volume is zero, but transimon the invariant are not trivial. So uh, it gives, uh, it has a, some solution to give a correct answer. And by following uh, Choyon Zickard result, I try to compute uh, the case of figure eight knot with odd length. Then uh, in this case, we can find a good solution. And it, of course, it gives the same correct ones. So we can do uh, this kind of numerical calculation, even uh, although it is, uh, how to say, it is complicated already. So uh, this is a result of not. And this is almost the end of my story, but uh, the time is over. So can I make a few minutes? Yes. Thank you very much. So I'd like to mention uh, uh, several things around this result. So this result is uh, related to volume conjecture. This is one of important uh, conjecture is not theory. So first I'd like to introduce, uh, explain a volume conjecture uh, quickly. So there are several invariants of not. Uh, so one is related to hyperbolic geometry like hyperbolic volume or Chan Simon variant. The another one is uh, related to very algebraic or combinatorial thing based on R matrix. And so actually joint polynomial or current joint polynomials are related to this structure. And also Kashev invariant is also an algebraic one. Then uh, there is a discovery by Murakami to Murakami uh, to relate these two invariants by taking some limit of the deformation parameter. Then volume conjecture is to give a relation uh, between these two invariants. So namely, uh, if you have current joint polynomial for the knot and by taking n is equal to infinity, it is a limit to take a uh, root of unity limit. Then uh, it reduced to the uh, complex volume. So it is, very nice conjecture, but highly non-trivial. So it is, uh, so there are many, many papers on this conjecture to study case-by-case uh, uh, -case computation. And so one good idea given by Dylan Sarston was to interpret our matrix, so generator of Ray group as ideal octahedron, as I explained. So this is very nice idea. And so, after that, cluster algebra appeared. And so in cluster algebra, so either tetrahedron corresponding to amyotration. So based on this idea, we try to describe this either octahedron by using this notation. This was our idea. And by using this cluster R matrix, uh, we co can compute. So we get, give some conjecture uh, to compute uh, this volume. Then on the other hand, uh, by using quantum cluster algebra, we can quantize this cluster R. So we show that uh, by taking the limit, Q goes to the uh, root of unity, we can get Kashaev's R matrix from our quantum cluster R. So, so we can make uh, two ways to go to two invariants of not by starting with the cluster thing. But I cannot say that we prove the volume conjecture at all. So, but we can view a volume conjecture from a different 
uh, viewpoint is cluster thing. So actually, uh, this quantum uh, cluster R, uh, which comes from uh, either octahedron, uh, is uh, shown to be a universal R of a cluster realization of uh, UQSL2. It is as proved by Schroeder and Shapiro and so three. Um, and so this means that our cluster R is very nicely from the viewpoint of representation theory too. So I'm very happy with uh, the result by Schroeder and Shapiro. So uh, this is the end of my talk. So thank you very much for your attention. Some questions? So thank you again. Thank you very much.